Okay, thank you for tuning in to Stampscaping 101. This is a scene that I just wanted to do very quickly. It's, uh, you know, basically about a half an hour scene or something like that. But it doesn't lack for any of the techniques that I've uh, used, uh, typically. I didn't run into a lot of the, like, any alcohol pens or something like that. But it really doesn't need it in something like this. But I wanted to stamp these uh, two wolves um, out as I was inspired by a scene I saw last night. Uh, and, uh, I don't know, I just felt like running into a composition. I didn't have too much time to do it, so uh, just a simple star birth stamp up top like that. And uh, my grassy textures down below, kind of create the format for it, or the foundation, and um, some trees in different sizes. I use three different sizes here, but you can use, you still use like one size of it. Um, uh, the other size is just, you know, control scale a little bit more and can kind of a subtle way in this composition. And, uh, I don't know, just my typical um, uh, pigment ink softening touches up here and for a little bit of fog, but uh, I think it makes for a pretty complete composition and a pretty quick one. Oh, I have my quote stamp up here. It kind of reads, heaven is under our feet as well as um, above our heads, Henry Derby. <laughs> I didn't have it dark enough up here. If I made it kind of darker, it would have stood out more, so it's more kind of subtle, but I like the interplay of text and copy within um, scenes and visuals and artwork in general. Um, I like, really like typography and the use of it. So anyways, that's stamped in there. And, uh, like I said, a pretty quick scene. We can call it kind of like, almost like speed stamping. Anyways, choose to watch the video. I hope you enjoy it. Okay, I just have a few minutes to uh, stamp something out today, so I'm going to do something that, I don't know, maybe we'll refer to as speed stamping. I was inspired by a scene that I saw yesterday using the... Uh, Wolves frolicking stamp, and uh, I don't know. I, I that happens all the time. I see someone's scene, and it inspires me. Uh, the way they've used an image, um, combinations of images, colors, etc. Sometimes it uh, it reminds me, you know, that I have a certain stamp or whatnot, or. Um, I don't know, it just, uh, that's the thing, that's, that's the way it goes for, for a lot of us, though, isn't it? We're very visual, and, um, I don't know, it just simply piques our interest, and we want to try it. So anyways, I'm not replicating the, uh, the imagery, but, um, I will use the stamp in here. I just did the wavy grass right down here, and the sedge fill. I'm doing this little, um, hill like that. And I'm going to make these two um, wolves kind of a kind of a, at the top of this little mound right here underneath um, kind of a nighttime sky and uh, uh, that's the concept. That's what I have in mind. And, and I want to do a, a field of like um, I forget what they call them. I don't know if they're forget-me-nots or paper whites. I, I can't remember the name of that uh, type of flower, but kind of these illuminated blue, I mean, uh, white flowers at, at nighttime. So uh, let's go for something like that, or that something in that spirit. I'm, I'm doing these um, kind of spring scenes um, lately with, with blossoms and whatnot, but um, we can do something with um, kind of the same spirit, but just at a different time of day. But, you know, the color of white would naturally be very um, illuminated and uh, reflective at night. Okay, let me see. I have... Th this is a Prussian blue. Okay, that one looks kind of dry. Let's go with this. Let's this other blue here. Okay, now this is the, the um, star birth image. Putting the dark blue ink over the whole thing. <laughs> this is an all stippled thing, so I, I can't tell if anything's going on there or not. But what I want to do is I want to bring in some variation into the uh, 
the image anyway. Okay. So I ink this all up with a couple different values of blue, very dark ones. And then what we'll do is we'll just kind of go into this and bring in a little bit of variation. There are these um, stars on this um, design and I'm going in and introducing kind of a lighter tone to it. I'll need to do a little bit of a blending here and there uh, with this. Okay, that was the 36. Okay, that's a manganese blue, and this is manganese blue. I think this one's a little bit juicier, though. Yeah. I might have reconstituted this one. This one's newer, though. I might have reconstituted it with a little bit of uh, uh, water. can't remember. I might, I might have even did, done it in a video. Okay, so adding this in, kind of in a little bit of a pattern, but you can do it completely, you know, more abstract and just, you know, color anywhere too. All right, now let me go back with this darker blue. Um, with the pad, and then let's try this again. Just kind of blending it out a little bit. All right, now let's do some really intense high-tech masking here, paper towel, like so. I'm joking, by the way. Um, let's see, which way should we should do this? There's these cloud formations right here. Let's go like this and do it this way. A little bit of an angle. I mean, with deep space imagery, you can kind of stamp it whatever way you want, but Eh, you know, when it was conceived, there was a bit of a, uh, on this image, kind of a top and a bottom type of thing. But, that being said, changing the, um, kind of the angle of it sometimes um, creates a little bit of a, kind of a dynamic um, kind of a appearance to it. It, having things on a slope or on a slant can give, you're seeing a little bit of a, what I call uh, visual kind of a momentum uh, movement, you know, certainly. Okay, let's do the same thing. I'll go for another impression of it. This is a image was drawn in the spirit of uh, some of those initial um, Hubble telescope images that came back <laughs> after they got that mirror or whatever uh, repaired. What a pain that was. I forgot what the reason for that was, but um, some great uh, uh, imagery has come back from that. Okay, so that. Let's mask off again. Let's see, let's change this up a little bit. Let's go like this. I think there was some black on here before because the first impression came out a little bit darker, but that's okay. All right, now we have this little space in here to fill in. Let's just uh, mask that little section off and come into it like so. Hopefully, is that the size that I inked up? I can't even remember. <laughs> All right, now, I'm overlapping a good half inch, quarter inch, half inch into the previous impression, okay? So that it blends in with, each, with itself. All right, so we have this kind of a, kind of real busy sky going on right now, but we're not done with it. Okay, now let's give, um, a little bit of, or a lot of structure to that sky. All right, so let's start off with some a light blue of some sort, or a medium blue, since this is more of a kind of a speed stamping um, exercise that I'm going through, that I'm go going to be going through here. 
Now, you always see me start off with this kind of slathering of tone, but with an image like this, you know, I mean, if I get a kind of an oval shape out there, it really doesn't show up very well, you know what I mean? So I don't have to worry about that. It's when you're kind of going on with a kind of a dry piece of paper in a vast field, you know, you have to kind of be careful about your application technique, but when the design is as busy as this one is right here, I don't really have to worry about it. I can really apply freely in terms of my technique. In other words, I don't want to get oval shapes everywhere, you know, and like a blank piece of paper, but this one is hardly blank. It's very full. Now what I am doing is I'm retaining the lightness of um, value on a lot of these stars up here because I want those stars to be nice and um, light and really stand out. So I'm kind of taking my tone, blending around it. This is a stylus tool, by the way, but you can use any kind of a, you know, a brush applicator. I don't know how many there are out there, but um, or just an ink applicator of your choice. Okay, there, there's different types out there. This one's very good because it's very absorbent and it holds ink. Okay, so I'm getting a good saturation of ink in my applicator, and I'm applying it down like that. It works a little bit differently if you're doing it on uh, glossy photo paper. Photo paper has an emulsion coating that is designed to dry very quickly, so it kind of grabs your ink and absorbs it a little bit faster. If that's the case, you can use a reinker and get a lot more ink in here so that it spreads out um, a little bit further, you know, before you have to re-ink it, okay? The more absorbent the paper is, the faster you're going to be utilize, yeah, using it off of your application device, tool, whatever, tip. Okay, so suddenly we have our kind of lighting scheme working in here. We've left a little bit of light on this mountain right here, so that's, uh, or this uh, hill. So that's the difference between lighting and just coloring, okay? This coloring for lighting means that you retain some of the lighter areas instead of coloring them the whole thing like a, you know, like an outline image in a coloring book or something of that sort. So just be a little bit more selective and instead of just coloring in this whole field of sky, I'm retaining some of the light up there. It doesn't matter what you do or where you do it, just as long as you kind of oscillate the surface a little bit between light and dark, okay? Now that's easy enough, and the other colors that I'm going to use on this now, my darker blues, I'm going to do the exact same thing, okay? Use any type of dye-based inks. I'm using my Marby ones because they're fairly juicy. I re-inked them, I don't know, a month ago or so. I don't need to re-ink those too often at all. Okay, this is a darker blue. It's called light blue, but it is kind of a more of a medium blue. And we're bringing this in like so, and I'm just kind of retaining that same light area that I did from the previous um, blue. Salvia blue. Right, same thing right here. Bringing it in. Kind of retaining that light area down there. It's going to be... It's acting like, it'll act like my stage, and uh, you can see uh, the light that's been retained down there are, you know, are kind of like spotlights, you know, um, targeting our stars of the stage, which will be those wolves. Okay, so one of the things that you just have to be careful about is when you get up to these darker tones, your paper is getting a little bit moist, so the ink isn't coming off your tip as fast as it did when it was just a, you know, you're doing this on blank paper, okay? When it's blank, just blank paper, it's going to be more absorbent because you haven't run all those kind of wet colors on it yet. But as I build this up, you know, this is starting to become a little bit more moist, so it's not pulling the ink off. So I just need to be careful that I don't just tone everything out, you know, again. Okay, that is that color right there. That was the number 10 blue, and let's go back up to the color that I stamped my star birth in. Okay. It's kind of more of a like a deep navy blue. 
Okay. you take areas within the scene, the lighter, the light areas will seem by contrast. So if you retain some of those light areas, the darker you take other areas will kind of pop out a little bit more by contrast. That is looking okay to me, but I'll tell you what, um, I think I want a little bit of a warmer tinge to this scene. I want it to be kind of happy and whatnot, so if I make it completely cold in terms of the temperature range, uh, the emotional quality of it will kind of be reflective of that same um, visual temperature. Okay, So I'm going to take some of this Caribbean blue add it into the mix and you can see it kind of warms things up and it doesn't that kind of change the spirit of this piece from otherwise a normal kind of a colder scene to a little bit of a warmer scene or I don't know if it's a warm scene it has elements of uh, warmth in it and by doing so I think the spirit of the piece kind of is altered a little bit doesn't necessarily make it the opposite, but it alters it, I think. Like so. Why don't we add some of it over here as well? It's kind of like tinting things, you know, in a very subtle manner. around with hue a little bit more. Um, let's see what might be time to clean off my tools again. Uh-oh. It's looking really... Oh, this has a little bit of green on it. Let's try that. That's kind of nice. It has that glowing kind of like glow-in-the-dark green now. I don't know what color was on there. It was some green from one of the previous scenes. What I'm looking for is pink. Let's try a, a pink on here. Now, I don't want to overlap pink and green, okay, because that's not going to be a good combination, but now this is a brand new pad to rose pink, okay, so I need to be careful. I don't want a big slathering of it. Let's see if we can kind of sneak some of that in just where there's a little bit of blue and introduce a little bit of this pink into the mix here. A little touch of it up there, like that. I don't know. It just kind of changes the, uh, or extends. I should say it extends the the range of hue within the scene, and hopefully it makes it a little bit more visually interesting or whatnot. You know, kind of like expanding the uh, kind of the language of color within the scene. You know, there's. There's hue, which is the actual color. There's value, which is relative light and dark. Um, intensity, which is relative brightness of a scene, you know, bright and dull. And then there's temperature, you know, warm and cold. So if you kind of have a little bit of elements, it doesn't mean a whole scene can't be all cold or something like that. You know, it could be a dramatic statement as well. But potentially, um, the more kind of, a, you know, the range of those um, traits 
are extended, the potentially the you know visually richer the piece can become. But there are reasons, you know, sometimes that we don't do that, you know, for dramatic reasons. Um, let's say there's everything is all kind of muted or something like that. It might, you know, be making a statement about, um, uh, you know, certain lighting within a scene. Okay, this is the Prussian blue. It's getting pretty dark. Prussian blue is just about the darkest blue ink I've ever seen out there. And it's pretty bright and dramatic of a value of blue, but still very bright. Okay. Let's go to black. We stamped out our um, wavy grass and uh, ooh, that is very juicy. I forgot that I re-inked my black pad. Luckily it spreads around easily. Because there's a lot of ink laid down on this. Um, uh, let's see, what was I going to say? I forgot what I was talking about. I interrupted myself. Oh, I stamped out my grasses in black, so I'm bringing that uh, element into the shading, okay? It's kind of a nice stage we're building here. It's um, really uh, kind of a dramatic um, space there for our two plain wild dogs. They are available on the canine plate or sold a la carte. It's starting to bend a little bit. All right, let's see. I thought I would bring in an element of um, a foreground element. Let's see, is that going to fit on here? Yeah, not quite. I'm not sure how much of this I'll use, but potentially quite a bit. Let's see. I need a real. Okay, here, that fits. Use my tack and peel block, tack and peel applied block. Tack and peel just is a sticky thing you put on your acrylic block in which it allows for a temporary mounting of your unmounted stamps. against that sky. Almost looks three-dimensional. Put another one over here to balance out the composition.
That's the leafless pines medium. Um, let's use the larger one as well. I'm not bothering to, uh, you know, tack it on down there because I'm just going to use the top. It's, it's of course looking too symmetrical here. I'm going to do this um, lesson on dramatic balance and imbalance sometime. But not on this scene right here. Okay. Just use the top portion right here. Okay. I mean, I could have used that same one over there. This one's just a little bit larger. Just for scale. It's subtle. Unless I use the whole, you know, the whole thing, you know, next to each other. Okay, but we'll use the small one here. Up on the hillside. Mask some of it off, like about like so. Or maybe I'll make it, I'll make a couple trees on the other side of the hill, so I'll just mask off the hill, the top of the hill. Like that, okay. off the top again and maybe go for a smaller portion of this. Let's go for a couple impressions. Maybe change the height a little bit for some variation. So it gets that dramatic nighttime sky. Apparently uh, there was a fire that came through this scene or this location of the scene. Probably a, by a, a year or two with the, uh, the amount of growth there on the, the grass. Okay, now let's go to these little critters right here. I'm going to have to do them, put them at, at an angle on this block so that they fit. All right, these two um, are standing in grass. Okay, so here's one of my little tips that I've done in a video before. I take my paper towel and I'm going to wipe off the feet, okay? And a good portion of the legs, I think, because if they're standing in grass, you're not going to see the bottom of their feet, okay? Like so. I mean, you can also just mask off and stamp, but uh, I think I have more control over it doing it this way. Okay. And then where do we want them? Uh, stem them a little bit higher, they're farther off in the distance. Stem them a little bit lower, they're a little bit closer to you, wherever you want them to go. I think they fit right here though. Kind of right in between those trees. I don't want that tree to be coming out um, kind of in the back of them. Okay, so you see they're standing in the grass now. Their feet, see how it kind of disappears into the grass? instead of having, you know, that base down there, that shadow, which would be more indicative of standing on a, you know, harder surface, some uh, dirt or something of that sort. All right, I need to put this on here, even though my desk is reasonably organized right here and clean up. Uh, I lose, lose these uh, plastic things. I always find them, but I, know, I have to kind of look around for them if I don't kind of put them back on right away. Okay, so, well, let's see. Let's get a little bit of extra texture in there. Even this grass, I mean, it looks okay. But sometimes I like a little bit of extra texture in my grass. This is tiny pebbles right here. Something like that. 
put some of this out in the shadows as well. It's just it's just kind of an extra textural element. And I love texture. In scenes, it takes on kind of a little bit more of a kinesthetic quality. Um, visually kinesthetic, not physically, because they're all just two-dimensional. Because you could do embossing or something like that for the imagery in the foreground or whatnot, so that it's actually raised, which would be interesting. All right, so let's see, where are we in this one? It's about 28 minutes and a half an hour for this scene so far. Moving along pretty quickly. Okay, I have my gel pen. And I love doing these types of little elements in here. Little stars. This scene right here, I, I probably could do, if I get, have a quote that would fit in here nicely. squiggle there that I don't like too much. <laughs> I kind of did a little accidental scribble there, but I can just kind of rub that ink right off and it comes right off. Okay, but um, those little stars up in the sky are nice, but um, I wanted to do these little Whatever they are, flowers, pearly, everlasting, or whatnot. And I'll kind of cluster them. It, it kind of makes a connection between, you know, land and sky, right? Because it's, we have this same convention of this white dot up in the sky, and it represents stars. And then we have it down below, and it represents, well, you know, flowers, or it could be illuminated um, dew on the grass, whatever, you know. I'm trying to make some of these dots a little bit larger here, kind of in the foreground. Nothing too extreme, but I'll kind of make them kind of smaller in the background, kind of pushing depth again. So I always have these little guys kind of frolicking through the, uh, the meadow at night. Let me see if I have a quote stamp for this one. I don't know. This would be one of those things where it's on a card format too and you open it up and there's a quote inside. I'm not sure if uh, I'll do one on the outside of this or not. I haven't done a quote stamp in a couple weeks or something like that. So let me check. Okay. I think I'm going to do this one. Heaven is under our feet as well as over our heads. Henry David Thoreau. And I think I have a spot for it right in here um, if stamped in white. My only thing is with um, pigment inks out there, they are not quite as opaque as I wish they were. Um, so I never know how, how much like a, a white image on a colored background is going to stand out. So, we'll have to see. All right, so let me test this out right here. I'm going to use a Brilliance white. Okay, Brilliance has the uh, reputation for, um, or the characteristics of drying uh, quickly and drying on glossy paper with no problem. So, um, you know, you could use another type, but you'd have to really wait a long time for it to dry. 
Okay, this is it over on black, so it stands out enough. I think it's going to be very subtle up here, okay? coverage of ink on this. Kind of want it down here. It's a lot easier to stamp these quotes if it we're stamping them in dye-based ink. Pigment ink works too, um, but just have to make sure you get a good even coverage of it. Okay, this camera's right in my face here, so I can't Gonna see over this. I'll stamp it a little bit higher because it's uh, a little bit darker up higher. This quote kind of stood out to me a little bit because I was just mentioning um, kind of wiping off the, the feet of the wolves and that they're kind of sunk into the grass, it seemed um, kind of appropriate. And then we have the, the nice stars above. Okay, so it's very subtle. I could have made it a little bit darker and it would have stood out more. But it's, it's invisible, because I, I meant it that way. Not really. I mean, we could emboss that too. Um, but anyway, uh, let me see, let me put a little few more. Oh, one of the things I was looking at down here that would look kind of nice is kind of some green here. Maybe. Uh, let me see if this stands out. Yeah, it doesn't stand out too much. Let me go with the lighter one. Uh, let me try the... Huh. Jelly Roll? Was this Jelly Roll working? I think I played around with that the other day and I could kind of get it working a little... Yeah, here we go. But this color is in the mix, so... Kind of that lime green, so I'm putting some of these flowers down here as well. So kind of just going for a little bit of a textural addition in color that is already in the color scheme, so it should harmonize with everything, no problem. I guess I do have pink up there, but I don't, I don't think I'll put pink down here. I think it'd be too much. Looking at some other colors, and I think that's what I'm going, this is a yellow. Okay. All right. Alright, I wasn't going to do that kind of that pigment ink application of um, fog in here, but I, I think it could do, you know, I don't know, is there any scene that I, I think can't, you know, wouldn't benefit from it? Maybe not. I hardly ever don't do this, so let's just put this on. We'll keep it simple, though. Okay, I'm kind of unraveling this Q-tip right here. And uh, making it soft, okay, and kind of wider. So I want a soft application, so I want a soft applicator. That makes sense. Hero hues, or you can use the uh, color box. Don't go with the uh, the brilliance. It's too. It's too. It dries too quickly. Uh, I think a shipment of rubber just came in. Ran out of some designs. Okay, so making some of these stars glow a little bit. Okay. Kind of gets a little bit more these atmospherics in here.
Okay. There. And let's bring a little bit of this kind of this atmospheric condition into our meadow a little bit. Put a little bit of a fog at the base of these animals. Like so base of a tree makes it a little bit less kind of harsh. We want crisp, but um, it's kind of fun to soften it up a little bit. It doesn't blur it out, but it just it makes it a little bit less um, um, of a contrast between that black and the surrounding area. Like that, and it varies the impression. See that right there? So it says it's, it's just kind of a low line fog down there, right around here and here, and then you hear these have these stars kind of in the sky that are kind of glowing a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, black. Fairly quick scene, but it doesn't lack for anything or any of the techniques that I typically bring into at least the you know the glossy cardstock type of look. We can build a scene fairly quickly and color it and finish it off. The only thing I haven't done is format it into a card format. I'll usually throw like a double mat on it or something like that. But as far as the actual stamping of it goes, you know, pretty quick here. Doesn't take too long, you know. And I had to go and search for some stamps that I was going to use. I didn't even know what I was going to use on here beyond kind of the starbirth wolves and this grass down here. The trees were kind of a little bit of an afterthought, but you could have done all kinds of things. Could be pine trees, could be... Uh, deciduous trees or whatever. These ones are simple to do and they create, you know, kind of a nice foreground with a obscuring too much of the background. In fact, having this tree next to like a star like that, they complement each other, right? They play off each other by having something dark against something light, something close, and, you know, near and far. And um, in this case, I kind of softened off those stars a little bit with a little bit of pigment so it's kind of plain crisp against soft or something like that, you know, hard against soft. So a lot of cr uh, contrasts like that. Anyways, hope you enjoyed the scene. Thanks for tuning into the channel. And as always, happy stamping.